Hey everybody, JJ here. Back again for another Saturday of Zoom networking. Really, really excited about my guest speaker today. Uh, he's been with us before. Uh, we've had a chance to get to know one another virtually. Not exactly in the same city, uh, but we're in the same country. Um, this young man is just a freaking rock star. He's out of pace for me, sub to community. He's amazing. He started as a student, uh, became an investor, an entrepreneur, is now a successful businessman. He's uh, a, a coach within the industry, has his own podcast, uh, just an all-around great guy. He's a husband. He's a father. He's just a, an unbelievable friend. My good friend, Mr. Jesse Stanton. Jesse, how you doing, my, my friend, my brother? JJ, I'm amazing, bro. Thank you so much. Then thank you for the wonderful introduction. You know, I've got to tell you, I was really nervous about coming on here. And I was like, man, you know what? The last time I was on JJ's Zoom, I think I looked similarly like this. And I haven't shaved since the last time I was on here. I was like, man, JJ might not recognize me with uh, little, 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 some, there's some things on here. So, but yeah. uh, we didn't have that issue today. So <laughs> thank, thank you for having me, brother. I really appreciate you. Grateful to be here. No, I, I appreciate you, uh, the value you bring to the community. You are a legend within Sub2. I've seen you've got your your new group. Is is it Net Network to Net Worth? Is that the name of your new group? I, I've got a couple things. So we we the one of the big things that I've been noticing all around and in, in, um, in Sub2 is when you look at the different avatars, Connector, which you do, by the way, real quick, not to deviate, but you like if there was a Michael Jordan of connectors and you could look that up in the dictionary, like it would say JJ is easy. In. Thank like, you. dude, you have just done a phenomenal job, man, with your group, um, the things that you're doing, your podcast, your your website, dude, everything that you are doing about connecting is 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 uh, like it's setting the bar. I remember, you know, you and I are both rock and roll fans. Yeah, I remember what I'm a huge fan of Kiss as I'm sure you are. Oh yeah. And I remember, I see a couple people up here. Yeah. Love it. I, uh, I remember watching an interview with Paul and Jean about how kiss got started. And they basically in the seventies, there was nothing like that. I mean, the makeup, the blood, the theatrics, the fire, the, there was nothing like that. And they got asked from a reporter, well, how did you guys come up with this? And their reply was dude, like we just, we created what we would have wanted to see as fans. As people in the audience, we created the show that we, as just fans of music and rock and roll, what we would have wanted to see. And as you were outlining your your group and what you've done and setting that standard and helping the people in such a way find the resources that they need to grow their business, it's completely unparalleled. And it made me think of that. And I'm like, man, you did the exact same thing. You put together something. That not only you, but even me, like would have wanted to have been a part of when I first got into this. So thank you very much for doing that, dude. Like it is, it is, it's unparalleled. It, it truly is what you are doing. I, I haven't seen um, or heard of anybody else doing it, certainly to the caliber that you're doing. So amazing. Thank, thank you very you. much for the opportunity to be here and to be a part of your community. Yeah, that that, that means a lot coming from you. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, a lot of times, and I'm, I'm sure you feel this way on occasion as well is you work really hard to put something together and to help a bunch of people. And most often what you hear is the negative criticism. You know, you don't always hear mm -hmm. the positive. And, and uh, you know, there have been times when I've just wanted to be like, do I still want to do this anymore? And then someone will reach out and just tell me how much I've impacted their life. And I'm like, wow, you know, you, you just don't expect it. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter if I've got 80 people on the call or eight people on the call. You know, I'm just going to keep going. If I can help just one person, then what I've done is worth it to me. We've got a gentleman on the, the call today. It's, it's relatively new to social media. And if I can be of any assistance to him and help him build his network and build his visibility and build his confidence and build his relationships, then I've done my job. You know, well, you're, you're, you're the standard of that, dude. And like, I, like, I, I couldn't help but think, dude, as you were kind of showcasing some of the stuff right before we kicked off, you're absolutely right. Like you have, you, you've made it so easy. You've created an environment that is so easy to figure out who like the, the star players are to grab onto and to hold their, their hand and say, Hey, I'm trying to do what you're trying to do. Let's connect. You've created that environment. And I haven't seen that from anybody else, man. 
you've highlighted everybody um, that you can go in and, and learn from and really uh, shorten the learning curve and, um, you know, create an environment where people can make leap and bounds growth uh, in their community, man. That's just, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're changing. Yeah. It's, it's more than one live at a time, man, but the, the, the sentiment is received. Yeah, no, I, I, I really appreciate that, you know, um, but today I want to talk about you. So, uh, for those that don't know you, uh, where in the country are you located? Uh, so I live in a small igloo in Wasilla, Alaska with my wife, and four kids. We got two Yorkies and three moose that like to frequent the the property. That's so <laughs> it's, cool. it's chilly, dude. I'm sitting here. I'm looking at like nine feet of snow out here right now, man. And uh, it is dark. That's the hard part about Alaska, bro. It's not. It's not so much the temperatures, at least where I'm at anyway. But it's the freaking darkness, man. That'll get you. So I need to. I need to come find a place. Uh, um, you know, next to you to to come visit or live. You know, for half the year. Yeah, most definitely. Let me ask you on that note. So, you know, being up north, obviously, in Alaska, yeah. and the earth is at a certain rotation. Does this mean like, as I understand, because I've never been to Alaska yet, mm-hmm. that depending on the time of the year, it's either mostly daytime or mostly nighttime. Is that correct? A hundred percent. Yep. Yep. So what ends up happening, you've got the summer solstice and we've got the winter solstice. Now, the winter solstice is is a few weeks away. It's about a month away is December 21st. So the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. Now, depending on where you are in Alaska, um, there's a place called Barrow, Alaska. That's really up north. It's like the closest point, I think, to like Russia from Alaska. And they, I think the sun set for the last time, maybe a day or two ago there in Barrow. And they won't see, they won't see any light again until like sometime in February, I think. Wow. So kind of depending on where you are, you get varying degrees of, of the darkness. But where I'm at, um, now, the sun usually will come up between, you know, 930 to 1030 as we continue moving closer to the winter solstice. And then uh, the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, December 21st. And as soon as December 22nd hits, we start gaining three to five minutes every single day all the way up to the summer solstice, which is June 21st, which is the longest day of the year. And then wow. we start losing three to five minutes all the way again until the winter solstice. But for the majority of the part, you're right. During the summer... It's light out all 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 night long. It's the craziest thing in the world. You can go you can go door knocking igloos up here at two a.m. if you want to. That's crazy. Hey, well, you're talking about coming to visit me. I'm you know uh, remodeling a house that I've acquired. It was my parents' house, mm-hmm. and uh, I've I've got that in the split of the family properties, and I'm remodeling that. It's going to be a beautiful home in the hills of Glendale down here, Southern California. Going to have a, a guest bedroom suite, own bathroom, and whole thing kind of like that. So, you you and your wife can come down and visit. The kids can flop on the couches there, swimming pool. It's going to be a really nice place. I'm looking forward to just having net, networking events there uh, at least twice a month, bringing over anyone that wants to come meet, you know, wants to be my friend. Because as the old saying goes, we don't help people that are, I'm, I'm not going to help someone that doesn't want to be my friend. You know, that's what networking is all about. It's about building relationships, discovering commonality. You can build rapport and surrounding yourself with people that will become like family. A hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I would love that, brother. Yeah. No, that invitation is wide open to you. Um, so let me ask, you know, um, we all get into real estate at a different time in our life, a different way. Um, some people, mom was an agent, dad was a contractor. They might've been around it. Maybe their grandfather owned property. Um, at 16, you know, getting into adulthood from being squirrely kids, we're driving at 16, we're voting at 18. We can buy an alcoholic beverage at 21 from your years, from your teens into your twenties, were you around real estate? If not, what were you doing in high school? What were you doing in your twenties? What was that? What was that part of your life's journey like for you? Good question. So when I, I grew up in a place called Ryrie, Idaho, population was like 500 and some change. Surprise, the main road was even paved. Kind of one of those things. And JJ, I, I grew up in an average home, man. I had average parents. I went to an average school. I had average friends. I had average grades. So, you know, my mom used to say when I was, uh, I grew up in a Christian household. So there was no cussing. You know, there's no kiss, no Metallica, no ACDC, none of the, no Guns and Roses. 
And yeah. she always used to say she would refer to cuss words as four letter words. She'd always say there's no four letter words in my house. And as I started getting into my entrepreneurial endeavors in my late twenties, I started looking back and realizing that, wow, we treated money growing up as if it was a four letter word, like the word money. Like we didn't talk about money. You didn't ask anybody how much money they were making. We didn't talk about how to make more money. If you wanted to make more money, it just meant you had to work harder. You had to work longer. You had to work overtime. You had to go get a college degree. And so that's kind of how I grew up. You know, you mentioned when you turn 16, you get a car. That's when we, you know, start working as well. And yeah. then after that, we we graduate high school. A lot of people uh, go to college. I joined the military, and I would I did I was in the Air Force for about fourteen years until wow. I I jumped into uh, real estate and um, got out. Now I'm doing this full time, and we got we got a couple different businesses, and it's been great, man. But it's a polar opposite from how I was raised. I was raised to you know, like I said. The belief set was, Jesse, if you could figure out how to make $100,000 a year, I mean, shit, Jesse, you might as well be Donald Trump. You can do anything you want to with $100,000 a year. I was watching a video, actually, as a matter of fact, because you're in, you're in Cali. I was watching a video last week. They were talking about the housing market in, I think it was San Diego during the 80s. And it said prices have soared to $80,000. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, Like, what are we going to do? But anyway, yeah, just a, it's a completely different mindset from uh, from how I grew up to you know the things that I'm doing now. So you got into the Air Force. You're in the military. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you get married while you were in the service? I did. Well, I I so I got married to my high school sweetheart. I joined the military. I was in the military for maybe six or seven months or so, um, and then I I and then we ended up getting married. So, now, so I've been married for like 13 years now. We've got four kids, uh, just living it up here in Alaska. I'm busy. That's great. So yeah. you know, while you're in the military, is that when you first started becoming aware of real estate investment as a, as a possible path? Yeah, this was actually, it's crazy how fast everything has happened because I had a childhood friend that I grew up with in Ryrie, Idaho. Um, he and I hadn't spoken probably in 15, 20 years, somewhere around there. This was actually in the beginning of 2020 that this this happened. We kind of got reconnected on Facebook. And you know how reconnections on Facebook typically tend to do. You just, what are you doing? What are you doing? How the family, where you live and all that kind of fun stuff. And then he asked me at one point, he said, Jesse, let me ask, have you ever thought about getting into real estate? Because he, he, he was into investing. And he asked me that and I said, well, yeah, I thought about getting my realtor's license a few years ago. And he said, no, 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 no. I was like, I'm not talking about being an investor or I'm not talking about being an agent. I'm talking about being an investor. And I kind of rolled my eyes and you guys can go look up. If you guys don't already know, you can go look up and see exactly what the military makes on a, on a monthly basis. It ain't a lot of money. I was like, bro, I, I it's not like I have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars just burning a hole in my pocket so that I can go buy a fourplex in Anchorage, Alaska. And thankfully, he was really patient with me. And he said, you know, Jesse, he's like, how about you jump in and be a fly on the wall? I've got a meeting with some other investors on Thursday. I said, okay, be me up. So JJ, I went reluctantly, if I'm being transparent with you. I went reluctantly. I had no interest in even jumping into this Zoom. I, re I, I, I almost didn't do it, but I didn't. I knew that it was going to be weird because I just told my friend that you, you know, after we had reconnected that I would do it. And I, did, I didn't want it to be weird. So I jumped into it, but I turned my camera off. I turned my microphone on mute. And I, I even started just kind of playing games, half-assed listening. But JJ, they started talking about leveraging other people's money, leveraging other people's debt, leveraging other people's credit to buy money or to buy, buy properties. And that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. I turned my game off and I kind of started you know, listening a little more intentionally. And that's kind of what started the whole rabbit hole for me. And just to see how I was raised to think about money, uh, working hard, um, all that kind of fun stuff to see how I'd spent the first 29 years of my life. I'm 33 now. And just to see how the last, uh, almost four years have been for me in my entrepreneurial endeavors. It's like, Oh my gosh, like only if I would have started this in high school, you know, yeah. so I'll be the first one in my family lineage, you know, to to change our our whole financial means, our whole financial trajectory. 
Yeah, you know, I um, that's referred to as breaking the cycle in some yeah. regards. You know, yeah. uh, dad did what grandpa did, grandpa did what great grandpa did, and there's just a consistent cycle, and then to, to break that cycle, which is huge. I I commend you. Let me let me. Are you still in the military at all, or are you now retired from the force, or you're just a full time investor? So I I I, I didn't retire. To retire, you got to do 20 years. I got out at 14 years and dude, everybody thought I was crazy. That's the hardest part of, of the entrepreneurial journey is making that transition between W2 to entrepreneur. There's this, there's this time period in between that is really, really hard because in order to have something you've never had, you have to do something that you've never done. Well, the only way that you can do that is with more information or with new information. Yeah. To start networking with people who have a different perception of reality and time than you do. So there comes this time when you're trying to leave your W-2 and you're trying to cling on to new information. The people that you work with, to include family, friends, neighbors, Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich. He said, there's a quote from him. It's one of my favorite quotes. I don't remember it verbatim, but it's essentially the reason people aren't successful is because they take the advice of their fans, fr- fr- or fan, or f- fans, friends, family, and neighbors. And it's during that time period that I think makes or breaks any entrepreneur when they're trying to break away from their old influence and get new information, but they don't quite have the success yet that they're looking for to be surrounded by a new group of friends. Yeah. So it's during that area that that is extremely difficult. And getting out at 14 years, bro, I mean, you can imagine I had everybody at work telling me I was crazy. I had a retired colonel uh, talk to me maybe about three weeks before I had, I had gotten out. And he's like, Jesse, you know, um, people make about $600,000 over the lifetime, over their lifetime of, of retirement. Like, think about what you're giving up. But from my perception, how do you tell somebody who has spent an entire lifetime justifying that their way is the best way? How do you tell them, bro, I'm trying to make 600 grand a month? You know what I mean? So it's like one of those things where you can't justify yourself. You can't tell people who aren't going to get that. It's just going to, it's just going to sound like you're bragging. So it's a really hard time with making that transition. So if anybody is there right now, um, let me know where I can be a resource for you because I, I, I've i been there myself. It is the hardest thing to do, especially in Alaska, no less. You know, there, there's actually a young man that um, has become a very good friend of mine. And um, I'll probably try and send him in your direction. Uh, he has a lot of promise. He's really intelligent. Um, but I'm trying to open up that path for him to, to saying um, – seeing the gold ring that we're all grabbing or trying to grab that you've, you know, of real estate investment and, and how to get there. And as you alluded to, um, you know, we talked about earlier a little bit, it comes with surrounding ourselves with the right people, networking. I say it all the time. Uh, networking leads to visibility and visibility leads to opportunity because as a real estate investor, we don't want anything hand to do. We're not asking for anything for free. We just want the opportunity to be successful. We just want the opportunity to develop a relationship with people that can help us. You know, all we want is the opportunity. But if we don't make ourselves visible, if we don't network, which results in being visible, we're denying ourselves the opportunity that we, in fact, seek for ourselves. A hundred percent, dude. I'm so glad that you said that. Like, just those, and the, and for some people, that's not. Networking is uncomfortable for some people. Oh yeah, and that's so great. That is what a, what a wonderful opportunity to grow. What a wonderful opportunity to be. You know, like you said, you never know how many handshake you could be one handshake away from completely changing your life. You could be one conversation away. One conversation, guys, with the right person can completely change your life. If you're thinking about how uncomfortable it is to network, think about the cost of not networking. Of not being able, being willing to put yourself out there, be involved with JJ's group. What is the cost of not being involved in that? Oh man, you, you know, um, I get new investors all the time come up and talking to me about. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. 
Um, I'm afraid to go to a, a real estate mixer or any kind of event like this. And a lot of people just want to blend into the background and they don't know how to talk to someone who's, you know, of your caliber, a successful investor. They don't know what to say. I don't bring any value is what I hear all the time. I don't know anything. I don't bring any value. And I tell, I tell the new investor, you don't need to know anything. I say, if you're meeting someone successful, they're not looking at you for funding. They're not looking at you to bring them their next huge deal. If anything, they're going to an event to see what what's on the landscape, see who's there, see what kind of people they might want to meet. Because if anything, they're looking for someone that they could bring under their wing to help build their their own team. Absolutely. So, so it's Absolutely. just a matter of extending oneself. And I tell people all the time, it was, you know, you want to build rapport. How do you talk to someone where you could build rapport? Because through building rapport, they will come to like you. What questions do you ask in a 10-minute conversation that when they walk away, you know, I really love that Jesse Stanton. Oh, my gosh. Just spent 10 minutes talking to that young man. He's fantastic. Why do they say this? Because you ask them questions about themselves for nine minutes. But what questions did you ask? You know, how do we create that that conversation? And, you know, I'm just trying to help the new investor all the time. And how do you market yourself? How do you extend yourself? You know, what do you, you know, as I call it, the, the, the tips and tricks that I like to share for free, you know, mm-hmm. um, yep. you know, just to help and, and to, to go off course for a second. Yeah. You know, everything I do to help the new investor, um, I do for free. I don't, I don't charge anything. Is this when I was new, I wanted help and there wasn't help anywhere that wasn't going to charge me. And I'm like, you're going to charge me to help me really. And so I just created my little group because there had to be a place for people to go where they can meet other people that could be their friend without mm-hmm. asking for something, you know, and, and through mm-hmm. that, um, I've, I've been blessed to meet people like yourself. You know, the feeling um, is mutual, brother. When when I got into this community um, of real estate investment students five years ago, way before you know, two three years before pay started, so too, mm-hmm. uh, a young man had told me in conversation. I was in only a couple of weeks, and he said, "You know, all these communities are great. You know, the education is great, the training, the coaching, the videos, but this is not rocket science. We're not making nuclear bombs out of plutonium here. So it's not brain surgery." Um, you can get all this education at the public library, YouTube University, Google, on the internet. It's all out there. How to yep. wholesale, how to refi, short sales. That when you're in these educational communities, the real goal are the relationships you build and take away. And if you're not building relationships, you're wasting your time. You know, so um, I, I just try to relate to people, convey to folks, you know, the importance of just being yourself, being real, true and genuine. And, and the thing is, you know, don't, you don't got to worry about appealing to everybody. Some people are going to love you. Some people aren't. Some people love me and some people don't, you know, and, and I don't worry about those that don't because they don't really know me. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. if, if, if they'll allow me to have the time, you know, and for like, you guys are listening on the call right now, whether they're on you, you watching on YouTube or you're on the call at all uh, live with us. Um, Just, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Go out, meet people, shake a hand, talk to them, ask them about themselves. Uh, What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about the acronym Ford, like the automobile, F-O-R-D, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. You want to talk to people about what's important to them. See what makes them tick. Do they have kids? Do they have a cat? Do they like do they like sports or fishing? Do they like traveling? Where's their favorite vacation spot? Tell me about the hat you're wearing. Oh, where's that hat from? Oh gosh, you went camping or fishing or it's from a vacation spot? Oh my goodness. You know, and then as you're talking to that person, they're they're gonna end that conversation thinking, you know, you weren't asking anything for yourself. You were wanting to know about them showing genuine interest in them. And if they don't appreciate that, then, you know, it was an exercise that you can learn from. That's 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 my off-course little comment there. 
No, I love that, dude. Thank you for sharing. I was writing that, just trying to write that down. So family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Ford. Yes. Dude. Ford. That is that is awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. You know, one of the things that I love doing when I'm networking, I, I kind of make a game out of it in my own head. I, I, I try to make, like, if I'm going to network, if I'm going to, like, if I jump into a Zoom with somebody, when you live in Alaska, you don't have a whole lot of meetups, um, you know, people to, people to network with up here. So in order to get into bigger rooms, you know, from Alaska, a lot of times it's done virtually, or you got to, you got to, you got to take a couple dog sleds and a bush plane to get out of Alaska to go, there you go. to go actually find people that exist outside. But um, one of the things I love to do, man, is when I when I'm networking in, in my head, I kind of make a game out of it, and I try to be so interested in what it is that this person has going on that by the time if we're gonna meet for thirty minutes, I will try in my head to spend all thirty minutes so interested and so invested in what they have going on and understanding what it is they're trying to do that by the time our call ends, they don't even have a, a chance to to ask me about about my stuff or about what I need. And in, in that, you know, it is, it is, and following this Ford model now, like having some, some structure to those conversations, uh, into some specifics, man, I, I just absolutely love that. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to employ that, that Ford model. I've never, never heard that before, but be interested, not interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, let's, um, I want I wanted to chat, you know, um, about one of the things you're known for, and okay. your topic today is is mastering your mindset, and you're so impactful in how you uh, just change people's life. You you motivate them. You you know redirect their course. Um, mastering your mindset for someone that's not aware of that, what does that mean? Maybe the new investor that's coming in, and I hear about mindset all the time. Everyone's talking about mindset, but you know, when we talk about mastering our mindset, you know, mm-hmm. how does one do that? What, what, what's, what's the rationale behind that? Uh, what's the benefit of that? Gosh, dang, man. What a great question. You know, I don't know that I have the, the depth or the Webster's dictionary, uh, <laughs> definition of that, but I can tell you just from my own experience, just from being in Alaska, I, I, when I joined, when I, when I started getting into real estate, I live in Alaska. That's four hours behind Eastern time. I had two other partners. And right when I joined sub two, we were working in Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee. So with the exception of Tennessee, Florida, and Georgia, Eastern time, Eastern time zone. So the, I'm four hours behind them. Now I was waking up at 5 a.m. because I was still in the military. I was waking up at 5 a.m. I would get ready. I would get some breakfast. and I'd leave the house at 545. I would get to work at 645. And I'd work from 645 till 4 p.m. I'd have an hour commute back to the house and I would get to the house at 5.45 or back to the house at five. My wife was a nurse and she was working nights. So we're kind of doing this high five thing. As soon as I get home, she's leaving to go to work. I had three kids at the time. I got four now, but I had three kids at the time. One was a newborn. And if if there's any parents in here listening or watching to this, then you guys can relate with where I'm going with this. But my wife leaves for work and I've got a business that I've got to figure out how am I going to start up by the time I even walk through the door to get home. It's already 9 PM in Florida. Everybody already been in bed. How many sellers am I going to get a hold of when I'm not even walking through the door at 9 PM? How do I, how do I start calling? How do I start doing these things? So that was problem one. Problem two was, like I said, when, once my wife left, I had to make dinner. I had to get my kids fed. I had to get my kids in the bath. I had to get pajamas on everybody. I get everybody to bed. I was finishing up my degree at the time. And now I had to figure out how do I run a business all at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So you can imagine like the mindset, the self-sabotage, the negative thoughts that I would sit here and tell myself because I would get on Facebook and I would start seeing everybody's doing deals. Everybody's making money. This person just made 40 grand. This person just made 10 grand. This person just made five grand. So you can see how easy it would be for somebody like myself to start having these thoughts of like, Oh my gosh, how do I like, why did I think I was a person that was capable of doing this? Why did I think I could do this? I just put my, myself, my family and all this debt. And I, 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 I live in Alaska. Jesse, why did you think this was even a good idea? 
why did you think you were even the person that was capable of doing this? So is there anybody else? Is anybody else relate with this? Anybody else ever had these thoughts? Because that was one, that was a huge thing for me. It just it, it, it killed my mindset. But JJ, I remember I was at the time I went on YouTube one night. I was laying in bed and I went on YouTube one night and I was looking at Pace's YouTube channel. I was watching one of Pace's videos. Don't remember what it was about. I was looking through the comments as I was watching it. I remember there was a comment who was kind of snarky. I remember reading it thinking like, oh my gosh, that was kind of a snarky ass comment. I'm surprised anybody, um, surprised anybody would, would say something like that. But I remember Pace responded to it. I was like, well, let me see what Pace is going to say. And JJ, here's where the mindset stuff started. Here's what completely changed my life. What he said was, was literally a godsend. It changed my life. It changed my business. It changed how I think. It changed everything. It built that foundation. And what's funny, guys, is what Pace said isn't anything more than what you would see on a bumper sticker. I don't have any tattoos, but if I was going to get a tattoo, I'd get this tatted right across my head. That's how much of an impact it had on me. But when I was in a situation where I felt like if there was anybody who could complain about time, who truly did not have enough time in their day, it was me. What Pace said was, millionaires don't complain about time. And that started this, uh, this it planted the seed of, of thoughts that triggered after that. So immediately after that, I thought, okay, if millionaires don't complain about time and 90% of millionaires are self-made, then there's reason to believe that most of those millionaires, if not all of them at some point have gone through similar circumstances I have. So what am I missing? If millionaires truly don't complain about time, how do I solve this problem? So it put me in a completely different mindset. I thought, well, you know what? I could start waking up at 3 a.m. That's 7 a.m. in Florida. Yeah. Probably a little early, but certainly better than calling people at 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. So that's what I ended up doing, JJ. I grabbed my laptop and I would go sit in my car in my garage. So I'm not waking the rest of the gang up at 3 a.m. And that's what I did. I started, I started busting out calls, man. And so now all of a sudden I was in a situation where I had no momentum. I had no clarity. I had no way of paying this credit card off or doing anything. All of a sudden I was getting momentum. I was getting traction. I was having conversations. I was building my skills. Not to mention the one hour ride to work that I had. I was like, dude, I can sit there and make calls. So all of a sudden that one thought happened and everything started changing. And by the time I got home from work at 5 p.m., that's when I could start scheduling other parts of my day and other parts of my business. Like I could have meetings with my business partner. I could have meetings to connect with other investors. I could work on social media and branding and marketing and things like that. So all of a sudden, I this this window of opportunity opened up that I didn't, you know, that I wasn't privy to because I was in a completely different mindset. And so that's just one example of how that seed got planted. And it created this snowballing and compounding effect that's amplified to where I'm at right now. Cynthia, you're on with Jesse Stanton. What's your question? I uh, would like, first of all, I want to say thank you for your share. Um, of course, thank you. And your inspiration, uh, your sense of motivation and determination that you uh, have shared with us. Uh, the too. second thing I wanted to share uh, Ash, I wanted to ask a question. Thank you, JJ, all the time, all the time. Um, but what what would you say, uh, having that JW two, and not only that W two, you 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 was you was hooked into the military thing. Okay, yeah. that that that's a commitment. You know, a lot of times that's a mm, that's that's a important. second marriage right there. Yeah, yeah buddy, <laughs> that's your first marriage on some people's on some people's laps. Well said. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so, what was your biggest challenge in making that shift? Okay, we got the naysayers who don't understand mm -hmm. because they will always be working for another person's job all their life they'll be there 30 years but 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 we know we know that music you know so somehow you got to you you can't explain it to them you just got to say it's inside of me you know what yeah. i'm saying this is where i'm at and it's inside of me absolutely but 
how did you or what did you find most challenging, the most challenging factor point uh, that you had to overcome? And then, and then I heard you say you had, while you was in the military, you had a group. You had a group that you you was entwining with with real estate. How did how did the, those two things work work for you? Okay, so um, first question was re repeat the gist of the first question the real challenge. quick. The the biggest challenge that the you biggest saw. challenge. Okay, so as much as I had, and thank you thank you for that question by the way, Cynthia. As as much as I had um, trouble with the the friends the family members, uh, the naysayers, the neighbor, like everybody was kind of, you know, as much of a challenge that is Cynthia, for me, I think one of the, the good parts of that or the easier parts of that, that I had that I was privy to that probably most people aren't was that I joined the military when I was 18 years old. So all of my family and everything, everybody's in Idaho and I'm up here in Alaska. So I could cut off, I mean, between us gals, at one point I even blocked my mom because every time I, every time we got on the phone, like it was just negativity or I was hearing stuff from my parents and I was like, dude, like I can't, I can't. And, and by the way, what I'm doing, part of what my goals are is to help retire my parents. And so, like you said, it, it's hard for people who have built an entire lifetime of justifying why they themselves can't or shouldn't, or it's not a good idea. You can't explain that to them. And so at one, and that was, that was, that was extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to have to do that, but it was easier to block out those people being that I was in Alaska, but I don't know that that was necessarily the, the, the most challenging one. I think the most challenging part, and I think this is what helped really callous my mindset and really helped me start making leaps and bounds was that, um, I didn't have a community up here. When you live in Alaska and you're trying to build a business like this, it's almost like trying to build a business from Mars. Like you don't have anybody up here that's doing what you want to be doing. And so you have to, you have to figure out, you know, how are you going to brand yourself? How are you going to market yourself? Like JJ's saying, you know, how are you going to put yourself out there? How are you going to network? How are you going to build these relationships? I think two weeks ago, we bought a million dollars in real estate in one week. Um, last week, I think we got under contract on another, probably somewhere between three and four million. Um, this Ooh. week, I, I don't even know where, we, buying a lot. But my point being was that it put me, because of the unique situation that I was in in Alaska, where I didn't have people here, I didn't have a community, my community was virtual. And you guys all know there's a big, um, there's just, something different. The energy is different. The relationships are different when you can meet with somebody in person. So mm -hmm. the fact that I didn't have that or wasn't privy to that, um, unbeknownst to me at the time, but hindsight now has leveraged my, I've been able to leverage myself in such a way that I wouldn't have been able to before, or that most people wouldn't have been able to before, because, you know, they're able to go all the meetups and those kind of things. So when I do go down to Phoenix or when I come and see JJ, like I know exactly what I'm going to be doing to network and to, you know, who I need to be networking with. So I think that was the biggest challenge to make mm -hmm. a long story long, Cynthia. I think that was the biggest challenge was trying to figure out how am I going to do this virtually with nobody here, with no interaction. And like I said, the time difference played a big part in that as well. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And, and you had the second question. What was the second question? How, how uh, you had a group. So, and you mentioned oh. you had the group while you was in the military. So how did you, how did, how did that group come together? Because I, I do think you do more if you can have, if you can find authentic, trusting, hardworking group like yourself, hardworking mm -hmm. person like yourself. It's mm -hmm. just, how do you find that? How did you, how did you, how do you get that cohesive group? I've got to, I've got to, um, I, in short, I guess I've, I've got to thank Pace for all of that. He provided that entire group, um, for me. So like J, JJ's, JJ's group is, is I, I wish, like, I'm so glad that he created that because I wish that that had been around when I got started as well. And I'm so grateful that that's what JJ created it for. So the fact that that is there now, 
that's something that I would definitely flock to. He's created that environment and free for everybody. Like if everybody's not in there leveraging it to their their max, like there's no reason why everybody in here can't be doing the things that they want to be doing. And part of that's because they're wearing all the hats. They're not networking appropriately and focusing on just one thing and bringing other people into their business to wear the other hats who are also Michael Jordans of those other things. Okay. Uh, thank you. I yeah, to- great question. Thank helpful. you for your question. Uh, Jesse, um, Cynthia had another comment in the chat that I wanted to throw out there. Do, oh, yeah. you, do you work with VAs? I, I don't, I don't have any VAs right now, but if you have any questions about hiring a VA, I am the Michael Jordan at training VAs and I'm Michael Jordan at training VAs because my first hire, right when I got into this was a VA and I lost like 15 grand over the course of maybe two or three months because I was under the impression and I even hired it from a company that said they train VAs, but they don't train VAs on things like, um, they don't get into the specifics of listening to the calls, helping them overcome objections. They don't teach them about things like um, American culture, sarcasm. You and I both know, Cynthia, when we call somebody and we're like, hey, are you interested in selling their house? And the seller says, yeah, for the right price. The tonality, everything about how I just said that, you and I both know, oh, this guy's not even interested. But a VA hears that, like, oh my gosh, he said yes. Yes, Jesse, this is what Jesse wants. Let me spend another 40 minutes on the phone with this cat, get all of his information, and then I'm going to send it on over to him. So nobody thinks of those small things like that to go over and and help your VA understand. And it makes all the freaking difference. Everybody, when they hire a VA, their first thought is, how do I automate this and become as hands-off as possible? So those are the types of things you got to be so cognizant of that make the biggest difference. Sean Baxter, you are on with Jesse Stanton. What's your question? Oh, long hey, time no see, homie. Hey, how are we doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? We're coming to support. That's what we can do. I oh, love it, brother. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to like you and JJ. It's like, like he said earlier, it's like, as long as he helped one people, one person to change their life, he's done his job. And I can honestly say that both of you has changed my life in more than one way. And just just showing up, being a new person, you know what, it's coming over and over. Just that is supportive and can change everybody's life. Because you, I've never met you, you've never met me in person, but you know who I am. So it's like that alone just puts you in the right space, the right meets the right person, all that. Is can be a life changer in itself. So thank you for all of that. Um, you're talking because I've been in the real estate space for a while, but just little by little by little, showing up, showing up. So it's not been fast, but it's been doing something constantly. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get into that spot of like you talk of mindset, different stuff like that, coaching. When do I know or what can I do to start getting more into that spot of now I need a coach for either mindset or business for any of that? I just want to make sure I understand the question. What do you do to start? I well, think- yeah, like when when do you know that you start need to start getting a mindset coach or like a business coach or like an accountability coach or mm-hmm. something like that. Cause like the way you talk, your personality, your tone, just everything just amplifies so well. I want to try to get that and take it and run with it, but I need that help or when do I need that help to start taking off and going? Gotcha. Great question. So I I think first and foremost, you need to have some clarity on what it is you're trying to do. And then I would start, um, here, here's an exercise that I'll give you that I give my clients and I do it personally myself. And it has helped me with like so many things because I mean, we're talking about Cynthia brought up, you know, training a VA we've talked about, you know, if there's a, a book called who not how, which is all about bringing people into their business, you focusing on one thing 
bringing other people into your business who are good at the other things that need to be done. And, um, you know, you kind of delegating that stuff out and networking and, and building those relationships. And what happens with a lot of people is when they bring other people into their business to fill like an acquisition role, a disposition role or whatever it is, they make the mistake of hiring the first person that they talk to, or they make a, a the mistake of hiring out of convenience. And so if you know that you need to fill, just as an example, an acquisition seat, you need an acquisition manager, then what I would do is I would almost kind of get some clarity on what that looks like. I had a client of mine and I'm going to, I'm, I'm just giving you some context and I'm going to answer your question. I had a client of mine, uh, actually coincidentally enough, it, it was an acquisition manager that he needed. And what he ended up doing was he was, he was talking to me about it and he's like, well, Jesse, I need somebody who can come in and make calls three hours a day, every single day. And he's like, I talked to this guy. He, can help me, but he's, he's newly married. He, his wife will only let him call, uh, every other day for three hours. Um, so I think that's where I'm going to start. And then once I kind of get a little bit more momentum, uh, you know, I'll continue kind of building and scaling from there. And I said, well, what is the standard that you need? What is it that you need in your business? What is it that you need? And he's like, well, I need someone to call every day. I said, then why would you settle for anything less. And so what I ended up having him do is I said, Hey, if you know that you need a lot of people underestimate the amount of volume that it takes to do something, they overestimate what they can do in the short term and completely underestimate what they can do in the long term. So they'll hire out of convenience thinking that everything is good. When, if you know that you need to hire somebody and hire one person or two people, I would, I would make a goal and say, all right, next week, I only need to hire one person, but next week I'm going to go talk to 20 people. I'm going to interview 20 people for this one job. And before I even do that, I'm going to write down my ideal partner. I need somebody who, uh, you know, almost, kind of, kind of almost as if you were an author of a book, like what is their story? What is their availability? What are their skills? Like write that stuff down, dude, get super, super clear on who it is that you want coming into your business and then go and set a goal and say, I'm going to interview 20 people over the course of this next week. And because I'm interviewing so many people for one position, because I've got volume there, I'm not going to put myself in a position where I have to settle. And that's your goal for that week. If you can do that one thing that week then that is a win. That is a move in the right direction. That's going to save you so much moving forward. So similarly, when you know, or when, when you think you need a mindset coach or a business coach or anything like that, you need to have the same kind of clarity. What is it that you're exactly trying to accomplish? And what is it, the bot, what is the bottleneck, whether it be tactical things or mindset things, self-development, whatever, what is it, the things that's keeping me from where am I am at right now and bridging that gap to where I want to go, where I want to be. What is that thing? And then write down the exact things that you think you need and then go interview a handful of people and say, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. And as you're talking to these different coaches and things like that, um, you know, you have absolute clarity and you're not going to take a gamble and say, well, if I jump in here, I hope it works. So don't just limit yourself to one person or two people or, hire somebody out of convenience. That's my advice. So I, it starts with having some clarity on what it is you're trying to accomplish and what it is that you need so that you're not asking the question, well, do I need a mindset coach? Do I need a business coach? Do I need a self-development coach? Do I need a life coach? Like get some clarity on exactly what it is that you need. And then I would go into it and say, all right, here's a list of potential coaches that I could hire. Let me go in and interview all of these. So I know I'm literally eliminating any and all guesswork. And I know exactly whether or not this is a good fit for me. Do not make the mistake of hiring out of convenience. Take some time to reflect, give yourself some grace so we can set up a proper foundation for you to continue launching and building, building from. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Just like business itself. It's like, what do I need? And it's like buying real estate. What's your buy box? Got to make sure you know what you're buying. If not, you're just looking at a bunch of crap. Absolutely. 
Well, in 30 seconds, real quick, if it's all right, and if it's all right with you, JJ, in 30 seconds, what's the bottleneck for you right now? What makes you think that you need to hire even hire a coach? Um, well, just mindset more or less of like getting sidetracked, staying on on like uh task and anything else like that. Um okay. I mean, doing these network things, I've now just found a, an actual partner partner to mm -hmm. start doing wholesale deals, other stuff together. So that I think mm -hmm. that accountability part will start coming into play. Mm. So it's just, I thoroughly enjoy your, your podcast every week. And it's just, I had the opportunity to talk to you one on one. So I was being a little selfish and took the opportunity. I'm glad you did, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, it, it's funny. Cause as you're telling me real quick in 30 seconds, as you're telling me the things that you're trying to do at some point the the mistake that most people make is they find themselves in the position of being the hustler in their business. And when you look at, I mean, Pace is business buying right now, right? Who's he buying businesses from? He's buying business from people who have owned businesses for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And they have been an employee in their business their entire time because they don't have the mindset. They don't have the know-how or the confidence or whatever to be able to scale and build this and not be the, the own or the, uh, an employee in their own business. Well, in real estate, it's no different. You find a lot of people wearing all the hats, doing all the things, and they can't figure out why they can't scale or get momentum. So what you're talking about right now, Sean, are things that are universally true. So learning, learning how to be accountable, learning how to manage your time, um, learning how to network appropriately, where your skills are, what skills you need to build and what skills you need to bring into your business. So those are all high performance habits right there. And those, once you hammer those things down, whether you're running a real estate business or buying a bowling alley and trying to, trying to scale it, it's the same things, man, learning how to delegate all those kind of things. And so why, why mindset and, and self-development is so important because where you are right now is not the person that's going to accomplish your dreams. You have to become, you literally have to become an entirely different person and you got to learn how to bridge that gap. And if you didn't have to become an, if you were the person right now that it took for you to make what it is that you're wanting to make and do the things you're wanting to do, you would already have it. And so it's important to learn those things so you can build a business appropriately and remove yourself from that of a hustler in your business into that of the CEO. And so the things that you're asking right now is going to do those. Those things are going to bridge that gap for you. Yeah. I mean, my dad was a one man contractor, do everything himself. So that's how I've been raised. And I'm trying to break that mold, which is very, very hard to break that mold. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, I'm coming to these calls and your calls and everything. It's like, okay, I'm trying to mindset change that because everybody says you're crazy. It's like, well, don't worry about that. I'll be crazy. So. Thank you. Again. Well, thank you, brother. You know, Jesse, I, I love what you had to say there about um, interviewing coaches and seeing who's out there. And um, that's not always a skill that people have, you know, and what I mean by skill is the skill of conversation, how to talk to someone, how to ask a question. And a lot of times, again, I, I take that back to networking and getting out of our box and reaching out to people and you know um out it's not my quote is a quote it's probably been out there just as long as the caveman's been swinging the club but um you need to build your network before you need it mm, yes you need to build relation you, you need to get out and talk to people you need to get out and build your network because the more you're talking, the more you're building the more you're building the more you're talking and what happens is time goes by is one develops a better talent at talking to someone and asking those questions because it's so, so important, as you say, to interview different coaches. But mm -hmm. before one gets to that point, one just needs to get good at talking to people to begin with. Yeah. You know, so, so, um, but for what goal? And as you said, the, the goal is, as we're building our company, as as we're 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 building the branches of what we want to do, whether it's acquiring a coach or or developing our acquisition team, 
Um, how are we going to do that? It's going to be by how we're getting the information, talking to people. So I loved your answer. That that was phenomenal. Freddie Massnot, you are on with Jesse Stanton. What's your question? What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Good. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear you. Sir. Okay. Uh, first, I want to uh, thank you for being here and all the information that you imparted on us. Thank you, JJ, as well, for your group and, you know, everything that you provide to this community. Uh, definitely means a lot to me as well. Uh, Jesse, my question for you is, um, and, and this is in part because I'm currently reading this book called uh, How to Invest in Real Estate by Joshua Dorkin and Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what the last chapter I was reading, they were talking about uh, leveraging other people's uh, retirement account. There's like self-directed IRA or 401k. So I guess I kind of wanted to ask you what, from your uh, point of view, what strategies could I use if I wanted to use that as an option to be able to get in, use that as an option to get into properties, whether it's for down payment or fixing the property up or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say real quick, it goes, it goes right back to JJ's point. Like you got to build that network before you even need it. And so I'll give you a really specific example. One of the big reasons why we're able to go and buy, you know, millions of dollars worth of real estate every single week is because I spent so much time, especially last year, I, I built out, you guys want to, let me share something with you guys. Are you okay if I go on a tangent real quick, but it's going to, it's going to give you guys some really good ideas on, on networking. So everybody here knows what Calendly is. So in short, I'm not going to give you the long, long version. I'll try to sum this up as much as possible. So most people have Calendly because it's like, hey, great connecting with you. Here's my Calendly. You know, find a time. Let's jump on a call and and uh, make it happen, right? And so it's just kind of there absentmindedly in case somebody needs it, in case I need to fit somebody in my schedule or whatever. That's why most people have a Calendly. What I ended up doing last year was I built out a Calendly that had um, 40 hours a week scheduled for networking. And I took about two weeks. And the only thing that I did for two weeks, I didn't talk to a seller. I didn't do shit. The only thing I did for two weeks was I went and put that Calendly link everywhere, bro. And I filled up my Calendly for 60 days straight. So then when I wake up every single day, most people, dude, wake up as if it was on accident. They wake up and they're like, oh my God. It's almost like, oh my gosh, I'm alive today. What should I do? Let's see who's on Facebook. you know. And they'll slide into people's DMs. They'll jump on a phone call. They have no idea who they're going to talk to, where they're going to talk to them. Like Their life is completely randomness. And bro, when you leave your schedule and everything up to randomness, you're going to put yourself in of a, you know, living in the land of mediocrity when you do that. So with this Calendly, I made it completely structured. I knew exactly who I was going to talk to that day. I know what I was going to talk to them about. I knew I had intentions going into it. I had intentions coming out of it. And so for 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 the first six days, every single day, I didn't have to think about who I was going to talk to, when I was going to talk to them. It was going to be on Zoom, a phone call, a DM, a message, a comment. I didn't have to think about any of that. They were all on Zoom and they were hour-long Zooms. Long story short, I'm not telling you you have to do this, but what I ended up doing, it equated to about 200 people a month is what I ended up... um, connecting with. Now it was a lot of people and it was a lot of time behind the screen. But when you talk to that many people, you're going to find deals. You're going to find money. You're going to find people that you can leverage and bring into your business. One of those people that I met, and I did this for probably about four or five months straight. So I met with a lot of people. One of the people that I ended up connecting with was an individual who specializes, like that's kind of like her one thing. Like if you guys haven't noticed, I've been telling you guys like focus on one thing, become the Michael Jordan at one thing. Most people do something until they are like just good enough. What you need to do when you focus on one thing is not just where it's good enough, but where you can't get it wrong. That little slight difference is what will literally propel you and put you into like the 1% of that, that one skill. That's what you want. And when you understand the amount of time, energy, and effort it takes to become the Michael Jordan at that one thing, you'll soon realize that I don't have time to do anything else. And so you have to leverage your community. You have to leverage your network. So one of the people that I ended up networking with was that was her superpower, was she could raise capital like nobody's business. And she also had the ability to be able to 
articulate to, to people who had all this money tied up in investment accounts, like you were talking about where they could leverage that for lending. So I've been leaning on her like a mofo with all this property that we've been buying. I don't have to worry about any of that, Freddie. She takes care of all that. Her her only yeah. job in my business is to go out and just cause chaos and raise a shit ton of money. Because I feel like yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have these accounts or and yeah. and and they just have money that's sitting there and and they're not, and especially in a savings account where you're really not going to generate any serious interest off of that. And it's like you can sit there and use that to leverage and make them money and whatever interest rate you guys negotiate. Yeah. So I'm kind of looking at, at at those as options too, but I'm but, but I'm glad that you brought up that calendar because that's a good a good thing for me to start doing. But now when I do that and I reach out to people that I already know, because uh, I'm from Indiana, so if I reach out to family, friends, or whatever that do have one of these types of accounts, or maybe they have a, uh, uh, I even heard with like life life insurance policy, people could take out a loan on your life insurance policy and you could maybe use that to put towards a down payment and then pay that back, you know, over time or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But how would you suggest approaching these individuals when I do sell up, uh, set up the calendar and, and, and start having these conversations with them? I remember I'd, I would, I would, you want to do again, what my mind game is, is I want to be so interested in what they're doing. Got you. What's working, what's not working so that I can figure this out. So if you and I were going to talk like, Hey, Freddie, Hey, it's so great to connect with you, bro. So let's just get into this, man. Like, tell me a little bit about yourself. What does your business look like? What's working? What's not working? What are some of the bottlenecks that you're looking for? And Freddie, by the way, I connect with a lot of people every day. So odds are, if I don't know, or if I can't solve your problem, maybe I can at least connect you with somebody who could. Okay. And then inevitably at some point during that conversation, because you're so vested and so interested in them, they're going to ask you, you know, Freddie, what can I do for you? Oh, well, you know what? I'm, I'm looking to raise a bunch of capital right now. We're buying properties. We're blah, 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 blah. Do you know anybody who's, you know, maybe got money tied up somewhere that they're looking to deploy? Okay. And that's amazing how much money you'll find just off of, off of referrals. I had a, um, when I was getting out of the military, I had physical therapy off base. Uh, it's so weird saying that because everybody here, I'm sure knows that's all they know is physical therapy off base. So foreign to me to go somewhere off base for that. But anyway, I was going to my physical therapist and as we were working, he started asking me, you know, why I was getting out and what I, you know, what I had going on and all that kind of stuff. And I started telling him and he's like, how are you doing all this? So it opened up a conversation about, you know, creative finance and money. And I said, well, here's what I do. There's people who will get a better return investing it with me than they do keeping it anywhere else or in the stock market or anything like that. And so now my physical therapist, who's now one of my lenders, um, I'm, that's how that's how that that turned out, just from networking, just being intentional. Don't leave any conversation to randomness. Yes. That's what, like I was talking about with Sean. You need to have absolute clarity on what it is you're trying to do. So you so you it's almost like putting together a grocery list. Like if I know I want to buy um $150 million in real estate next year, then I'm going to have to have two things. I need a deal and I need money. And so I have a grocery list. I don't know if you guys are spouse, if you guys are married or have a spouse or anything, but my wife, when she sends me to Walmart, she sends me with a grocery list and it is specific AF. It's like, you got to get this cheese from this store at this brand. We need the slices, not the brick. It's here. It's located by the, you know, by the milk or whatever. She tell you like, exactly. You need to have that kind of clarity in your business. Yeah. So when you're networking with people, you don't want to go to a networking event and just put 50 random ass numbers in your phone. You right. want to go into that networking event knowing exactly what you need to move the needle forward. Because if you're only there for an hour or three hours, you got to be so intentional with your time. Now, you might meet a lot of great people, but you want more coming out of the event than just 50 extra phone numbers, right? Wouldn't it be great to come out with three lenders as opposed to 50 random numbers? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, uh, I, that's something that I've noticed over time, just going to different networking events. And uh, I haven't read this book yet, but this is a book by uh, John C. Maxwell. Uh, Everyone communicates, few connect. Yes. And I was like, wow, that actually makes sense because you go to a networking event, you meet all these people, but you only actually are connecting with only a few people. And that, like you said, that needle is moving forward. But then you got 
50 business cards in your pocket <laughs> and nothing happens with most of them. So no, that definitely makes sense for sure. Did I answer your question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I just had one more thing. Uh, yeah. so, so don't pose it as a direct question to them, but just asking kind of a roundabout way. Do you know someone that's willing to kind of, uh, I guess, leverage that uh whatever if they have money that's just sitting around that's not really generating any real interest mm -hmm. so okay. i'm glad that you asked that because here's the mistake most people make and you, you you can see it on facebook and everywhere else i've got a house and i'm buying sub two in north carolina i need 50 grand who wants to loan me money what <laughs> who wants to loan you money who are you so especially when it comes, that's the, one of the big differences between private money and hard money. Hard money is a transactional relationship. Here's the money. These are the terms. This is what you owe me. Private money, when you're raising private capital, it's all relationship. Yeah. It's so surprising to me that people would just sit there and post on Facebook be like, hey, who wants to loan me? Who wants to give me your money? What? No. Gotcha. So I, the way that I phrase it, I'm so glad that you asked this is such a good question. It's, it's one of the small differences, but it's one of those things that is going to separate you from everybody else by understanding. Most people, if they meet a private money lender, they're like, hey, I'm working on this deal. Can you loan me money on that? And that's essentially how they word it. It's an I statement, right? If you were, if I knew you were a lender and you and I were connecting, I'm like, Freddie, hey, I've been seeing, I've been looking at your stuff. And by the way, you'll be surprised how much information you can get from somebody if you're going to network with them by just spending five minutes scrolling through their social media. What a great way to connect with somebody having just a little bit of information. Hey, I saw you were speaking in San Juan next week. Tell me about that. Oh, hey, by the way, I also, so you're, you're lending to my understanding that, right? Yeah, I'm lending. Cool. What types of, what, where, how are you looking to deploy your money? What types of returns are you looking for? If I can find this for you, would that help you? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. If I, if I, if I could bring you a deal that fit this, is that something you think you would be looking for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you, you, that little difference between, hey, I've got this deal, can you give me money? And me saying, hey, I understand this is what you're trying to accomplish. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Gotcha. I connect with a lot of people. If somebody has a deal that meets X, Y, and Z, and it could be, it could be even one of the deals in my pipeline, but I'm going to use somebody else as an example. If somebody else, you know, brings a deal, it's X, Y, and Z. Can I connect them with you? How much better does that come across than, Hey, Freddie, I got this deal in North Carolina. Um, you want to lend on it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a yeah, subtle, means... it's a subtle change, man. But when you, when you make it about the other person, it goes a long way and people are going to remember you for that. Cynthia, you are on again with Jesse. What's your question? So we didn't get to that saying it was, the question is I already asked, but we didn't answer. And that was while he was in the military, he he mentioned a group. He had a group. And so we skipped over that and went straight to kind of to the VA. But he was he 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 stated that he had a group uh that he was connecting with. So how did you put that group together? That is becoming that's I'm I, I, I that's a goal for me for next year. I've been mm -hmm. sitting here since 2018 from from fortune builders just 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 pulling pulling this rope trying to trying to get something done. Mm -hmm. How did you how did did you have a group while you was in the military or before you got out of the military or when you did get a group when did you get it? How did you get it? Can you be a little bit more specific? So I want to make sure I have a full understanding. A what group, it, are you talking about? Did I create like my own Facebook group or no, are you no, talking no. about real estate, real Jesse, estate, doing business? Jesse, if I could jump in here for a second. Yeah. Uh, when this came up earlier, you had talked to, she had mentioned the group and you'd said that through pace that you were given a group. So now did you get into sub two before you uh, left the military? Sub two was my group. Yes. I got into sub two right before my, my right. contract expired. So, so yeah, sub two was my group. I paid to get to get into that group. And so that was your because Pace Pace does meetings at five in the morning on Arizona time. So that that was your that was your interaction. 
That was my group. And like I said, I joined right when right when the mentorship had started. So okay. it was it was it was a little more intimate than it is now. Okay. Do you have a group right now? Do you have a group? Oh, you're talking about like business partners group. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I met my business partners through Sub2. So they lived in Florida and in Tennessee. And the three of us were partnered up and we started, you know, wholesaling together. Um, I've gone through a couple of different business partners since then. I've gained a little bit more clarity on what I need from a business partner and what I can provide and all that kind of fun stuff. And now, yes. Yeah, so I've got one other business partner. We dissolved, we stopped wholesaling about two months ago and we're just on a buying spree now. So yeah, I dissolved my wholesaling business, um, two months ago and it's just me and I, my business partner, Chris, who lives in New York. And we just hired an operations manager, uh, maybe about four or four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago. So it's just the three of us now. Okay. So this, this is my last question. How yeah. did you find the operation, uh, manager operations manager? And then how did you put that your expectation? What did you want out of that, ma that operational manager? How did, how did you, how did you find them and what did you want? out of them? What skills did you want them to have? So great experience? question. This is, this is going to be a very anticlimactic answer for you. Um, my operations manager that's currently in here, he and I were both in the military together. We served together 10 years ago. So I knew of him. Um, we, we maintained a relationship and then he got into sub two, probably two years ago. And he'd helped us out with like, uh, doing acquisitions at one point. And so we knew his work ethic. We know his, we knew his thoroughness. We knew how well he was structured. Fantastic communicator. Fantastic. I mean, like I said, he was doing acquisitions so he could communicate, articulate things very well. He was very well spoken. He was, um, very punctual. He was abundant. He was happy. That makes a big difference. You want to bring people into your workplace that are happy, that are high energy. Um, and so when we dissolved our wholesaling business, we're going through, we, we, I had, I not had, had we not, had, had we not brought him in, I would have done what I, what I, um, what I was talking about. I think, who was I talking with? Was it Sean? Where I was telling, I was using like an acquisitions manager as an example, like, Hey, like draw down, create, create some SOPs. You know what SOPs are? Create some SOPs, standard operation, operating procedures. So basically, basically SOPs are kind of like a guideline of what you need that person in that position to fulfill. So have those written down and then start interviewing a handful of people. So that's what I would have done had we not already had experience working with him and had I not known him from serving together. Kenny Durant, you're on with Jesse Stanton. What's your question? Hey, thanks, JJ. Appreciate it. Um, and hey, Jesse, Anyway, good to meet you. Appreciate you taking the time. This has been, yeah, it's been awesome. Got plenty Thank of notes brother. here. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks. Um, and so you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, getting up early, you know, 3 a.m. your time and making phone calls. Yeah. You know, I know that was maybe years ago or something, but I, I was just curious, you know, what was, who were you reaching out to? Like, you know, and, it, you know, if that was maybe not, not quite the way you'd go about it today. Uh, you know, if, if it was, if you kind of approach it a different way, you know, who, yeah, if you wouldn't call those same people that you were, you know, now, like, is there someone you would focus on reaching out to, to make those calls? And, and I guess kind of second part to that or kind of correlates, um, you know, did you find more success like calling, certain people versus others. Yeah. Anyway. Great question. So if I, in, in short, if I understand your question, it's kind of framed around, you want to know what the avatar of the sellers that I'm calling is and whether or not I would continue calling those same avatars today, basically. Right. Like whether yeah, that's pre foreclosure, expired listings, tired landlord. Is that what you're asking? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. So, man, this was, this was three. Yeah, this is almost three and a half years ago. Um, okay. I still wake up at 3 a.m. 
I've learned a lot <laughs> since then. But uh, right now, I mean, I would focus on my 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 strategy has changed a little bit. So I'll, I'll kind of give you a little bit more context, maybe some things to take a note of, and then I'll answer your okay. question. So one of the things that I encourage everybody to get cognizant of is when you're setting some goals aside and you're getting some clarity on what it is you're wanting to do, it's really easy for most people. The most the mistake that most people make is they get wrapped up in the process and they don't focus in on the result. When you focus on the result, it's interesting how your mind will start to find a faster way to do it. So here's an exercise I give my clients and everybody else. This is, this is and I, I do this myself. Let's say what, what's your overall goal? Can are you are you trying to wholesale? Do you want to be wholesaling in a year from now and five years from now? Or are you trying to buy and hold? Or what is it that you're trying to do? I see you got a gator on there. Yeah. So, you know, right now I'm just kind of looking and doing like uh PML deals, but ideally uh, my end goal is to buy and hold. Okay. What's keeping you from buying and holding right now? Um well, Why can't I, you go buy a property next week? I probably could. I just I'm trying to figure out how to how to get there. I guess um, I, you know, one of my I guess challenges is just uh, funds uh, is is one thought. I know I can you know get there and network with others. I, so I I have some thoughts and about okay. property nearby that I'm going to work on. Um, okay. And anyway, but. Yeah, you. Oh, this you is tell good. Me. I hope you don't mind me. I, I, I didn't mean to be picking on you, by the way, but I think I think no, this that, is good great. for yourself and for everybody else here. Um, so you mentioned funds, but you're. You know, I, would, I would assume the questions that you're asking is probably, uh, are you planning? Are you trying to wholesale so you can raise the funds? Yeah, I've I've uh, you know been looking for like straight up gator deals. I haven't like EMD deals I haven't found as many of those, but PML seem to be more. So I have a, a friend of mine, kind of a business partner that we're both going in on deals. He's got more funds than I do. So, um, you know, anyway, just trying to build up capital to, uh, yeah, get into some buy and hold. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was kind of my plan, but you know, I'm, I'm open to, <laughs> I might, I might, I might kind of change your, your, your strategy a little bit, but I'll also Perfect. answer your question yeah, anyway. Great. So you mentioned there's, when you're, when you're focusing on buying holding, a lot of people's thought process going into it is I don't have any money right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a wholesaling business because I don't need really a whole lot of money to do that. I'm going to start reaching out to all these different prospects. I'm going to skip trace a list. And then I'm going to start calling them. And then eventually at some point I need, need to bring somebody else in to call them. And then I have to train that person and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to have to start out, you know, I'll start out with trying to make $10,000 a month. Once I hit $10,000 a month, I'll go up to 20, then I'll go up to 40, then I'll go up to 80 and then a hundred. And then I'll be able to take that money and go buy properties. So you can see how long you can really stretch this thing out here before you get your end result. So when we focus on the result and not the process, your perception changes, your filter changes, the way that you see opportunity is going to change. Mm -hmm. So real quick right now, Kenny, how many items, I'm going to give you five seconds. How many items around the room that you're in right now are red? Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. How many did you count? Okay. Got five of them. You got five of them. Yep. How how many how many in that room were blue? Uh, no, you can't count yeah. them now. I don't know. <laughs> there, I'm sure there's a lot. Okay, so you know <laughs> that there's a lot, but right. you didn't you didn't see them, right? Right. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. Opportunity right. is literally all around us, and when we're looking for the result, that's how you start to see things that were right in front of you that you hadn't noticed before. So instead of focusing on the process, instead of focusing on what, what list do I skip trace? What, what avatar of seller do I, do I call? 
you mentioned right now, the only thing that's keeping you from going and purchasing a property is money. So what were to happen? We've got six weeks, seven weeks, something like that left before the end of the year. Yeah. Kenny, what would happen? What we do between now and the end of the year is going to determine in a large way how the first quarter of 2024 is going to look for us. Right. What if, what do you think would happen theoretically if you literally stopped doing everything you're doing right now? You didn't spend one more second calling a seller or skip tracing a list or collecting data or anything like that. What would happen if you literally spent the next six weeks trying to connect with as many people as you can to raise as much capital as you can? What if you did nothing except that one thing? How do you think 2024 would look like for you? January of 2024. What would that do for you? Yeah, uh, things would yeah definitely be yeah a lot different. There's certainly uh, no shortage of deals, right? Right, right. So there's wholesalers that are do already doing all the things. You don't have to worry about that. There's already wholesalers doing all the things. There's no, no shortage of abundance of deals to be had. So what if you could raise a million dollars? What if you could raise five million dollars? What if you could raise five hundred thousand between now and the end of the year? And have that money ready to deploy. How fast would you start hitting your goals of buying and holds in as early as January, as opposed to trying to figure out which list to skip trace, who to talk to, how to overcome this objection, how do I underwrite this, where are the buyers at, where are the contractors at, what does rehab look like? Let me go back and follow up with the seller for another three weeks. You know what I mean? So it's right. really easy to get focused on the process, but if you can start shifting your mindset to going for the result, it's so interesting how much faster a lot of us will start reaching our goals. Focus on the result, not the process. Change your question, change your life. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. But to that's, answer your uh, question, I I don't I was calling like a bunch of pre-foreclosures like three and a half years ago. Gotcha. And my VA yeah. was calling them. And then when I'd get up at 3 a.m., then I would I would follow up on the ones that my VA had sent over the day prior. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, with that being said, uh, is that something, you know, I know you're in a different spot at this point, but is that something you would recommend today? Like, go on that route or, or, you know, I mean, I, like this, of course, where he said, change my mind, like my focus, obviously that's mm -hmm. huge and I need to adjust there. Um, but as part of that, like, would you recommend doing that type of calling and, or, you know, any type of calling or is it just more, you know, networking, like you mentioned earlier and it depends on what your result is. If your result okay. is like, if, if you're trying to buy and hold, like I'm trying to buy and hold, my highest and best use of my time is not going to be spending an, a second on the phone with anybody else. Right. I'm either going to find capital myself, I'm going to spend time networking with people and, and raise capital myself, or I'm going to go find other people. I don't know why, why does it do that? I'm going to go find other people who are good at raising capital. Um, right. And I pay them a fee for raising the capital for me. As I was sharing with you guys I, last year, when I started building out my Calendly, and I told you guys I was meeting with 200 people a month, one of the things I ended up doing is I started figuring out, well, how do I, how do I, what is the result that I'm looking for, for connecting with all these people? Here's a perfect example, Kenny. I started asking myself, what's the result I'm looking for? Well, I need money and I need deals. I don't want to be wholesaling. I want to buy and hold any money and I need deals. So I started asking myself, well, what if I could just connect with 20 connectors a month? You know what? You're familiar with the avatar connector. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's their entire job is to connect with people. Their entire job is to do what I'm spending and breaking. You know, I'm spending all my time doing that's their job. So I thought, well, what if I could connect with 20 connectors and if each of those 20 connectors has a hundred relationships each, then guess what? I now have access to 2000 people a month as opposed to me spending 90% of my time behind a monitor only connecting with 200 people a month. 
So when I focus on the result, it's interesting how your mind starts working. It starts finding, well, what is the fastest and least resistant way to get from A to B? But you have to look at the result that you're looking at. So now all of a sudden I was spending 20 hours a month behind a computer and not instead of 200 hours a month behind a computer. And I was getting 10 times the result. So when you can remove yourself from that situation and, and like that exercise we just did, when you look at opportunity through a completely different filter, you're going to see things that are right in front of you that you hadn't noticed before. And you're like, oh my gosh, dude, this is, this is a 10 X move right here. This is how you 10 X your business without working more. When people think 10 X, when they, you know, most people are like trying to figure out how they go from 10,000 a month to 20,000 a month. And what they don't understand is it takes the same amount of time, energy, and effort to make 10 grand a month as it does a hundred grand a month. But that right there, Kenny, is a prime example on how you 10x what it is you're trying to do while literally working less. Because most people associate 10x moves with 10x the amount of time, energy, and effort. And they're like, dude, I'm already I'm already working 18 hours a day, man. I don't got time to 10x something. I'm trying to get to 10 grand a month. Right. But when you put yourself in a completely different mindset and you focus on the result, not the process, you'll start to see things much differently. I'll give you a real quick in 10 seconds. If you don't journal, start journaling. And part of the, part of what I would have you journal is just what you do every single day. It doesn't got to be this big, long story. It doesn't got to be pages and pages. Just document. Took a phone call from John today. Jumped on a Zoom with JJ today. Um, blah, 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 blah. Everything you did, right? And then do that Monday through Saturday. Just document. Did this, did this, did this. Had a phone call with this. This is what we talked about. And on Sunday, take 15 or 20 minutes and just look back at those things you documented over the course of the week, literally everything you did, Kenny, every zoom you jumped in, every phone call you had, every, every little thing that you did, how much time you spent underwriting properties, whatever, add it all up and you'll start to see how you are spending your time, how much time you're wasting. You get a, somebody <laughs> slides into your DMs and they're like, Kenny, Hey, can you jump on a phone call real quick? Want to want you to run, run the, you know, analyze this deal for me real quick. Yeah. You got to say no to $10,000 opportunities, bro. So you can say yes to a hundred thousand dollar a month opportunities. Jesse brother dropping some nuggets, man. Um, we're we're going to wrap this up. We're gone a little bit longer, but anytime we're dropping gold nuggets, I'll, I'll just keep the, t- keep the clock ticking. Hey, um, one, thank I, just you. Wanna, I just want to thank you so much for coming on today. Um, journaling, huge, huge. That's something I probably need to do more as well because, you know, my time is all over the place and it would just allow me to better track what I'm doing, how my time is spent. And I would heart- wholeheartedly recommend that to everybody on the call, anybody that's watching right now on YouTube. You know, and then, of course, your tip earlier about interviewing people, whether it's coaches, whether it's business partners. And that's just, you know, people that you're engaging with, you know, um, for you guys that are adding people to your friends list on Facebook. I mean, one thing I never do, and I get I get flack for this all the time, is just accept a friend request because somebody sent it to me. I don't even care if we've got 200 mutual friends. I don't do that. You know, if I don't if I can't get their phone number, if they're not willing to give me their phone number and their email address, then to me there's no sense in adding them. You know, I, I say all the time, if I'm gonna add a real estate investor, Jesse, it's and I can obviously see they're a real estate investor. We've got 100, 200 mutual friends in sub two. It's for the purpose of doing business together. And I don't want to wait a year to get their phone number. I want to get it right off the bat. If anything, to jump on the phone and see if we're even going to resonate with one another. We may not. So, you know, let's save, let's save that spot on my friends list for somebody that, that, that deserves it. You know, but I, I tell folks, you know, I cannot wire earnest money deposit via Facebook message. I cannot sign your escrow documents via Facebook message. And, and and as well to get to know someone because we need to see are, are we of the same mindset are we of the same character the heart integrity all that kind of stuff for for those of you on the call you probably heard this and Justin you may have heard me say this before I will buy a property from anyone where the numbers make sense I will sell a property anyone whose money clears escrow but if I'm going to let you be my joint venture partner I'm going to be your joint venture partner we're going to financially jump into bed together. I need to make sure this is the kind of person that has a heart, integrity, and character of someone. I'm going to sit at a holiday dinner table in my home with my kids and grandkids, with my parents and grandparents. 
Because if you're not, I don't want to do business with you. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care what stage you're on. I don't care who you're standing next to in a photograph. Um, there are other people I'd rather do business with. But um, again, the way we determine that, just as the way we determine who's going to be our coach, is by talking to people. And that's where it all starts with networking. We need to develop the skill to be able to talk to other people. We need to be able to develop the skill to convey our thoughts and our intent and our desire and our interests. We need to be able to develop the skill to understand what other people want and think and feel. And that comes with communication. That comes with conversation. And that's what networking is all about. So I'm bam, bam, bam. That's that's my home run for the day. Hey, um, I got two last questions for you, my friend. If people want to get a hold of you, watching on the call right now or watching this later on YouTube recording or people watching on YouTube next week, next month, months down the line. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, you guys got my number right here. Um, I'm, I'm pretty active on WhatsApp or messenger or the gram or wherever you guys want to hit me. I know some people are real specific, but like JJ, I'm like, dude, I just, I want to talk to anybody and everybody. I want to have as many friends. I want to make as much money with all of you as I can. So I'm pretty active anywhere. You guys can hit me up anywhere. I'll tell you, brother, I, I thank you so much. I, I've been seeing people taking notes the whole time. I'm see, you see people write and getting those pens and and uh, just serious gold nuggets. I cannot thank you enough. Um, I got one last question. Yes, my, group, my group is a networking group, right? And I talk about networking, the importance of it all the time. I think to the point where sometimes I become a talking head for people. He's just going at it again. But for someone of your experience, of your stature in the investment community, sub two, as well as just real estate investment to begin with. Um, every real estate educational community has a Facebook page for their student body. And all these education communities have brand new investors coming into the mix and experienced investors coming to the mix. Mm -hmm. Some have used Facebook before since junior high school. I know how to use Facebook. I've been using it since I was 12. Some are just <laughs> creating a brand new Facebook page because they never used it before. But now that we're using social media, Facebook in particular, as a business tool, what is the importance of networking to the success of someone's business, the importance of social media, and more specifically, possibly joining a group like mine to the, to the success of someone's business? Uh, in short, I mean, uh, you know, I, I could make a, <laughs> I could go on another 20 minutes of why that's so stinking important. But you got to ask yourself, kind of like we were talking about when we, before we hopped on, like what what is the cost of not joining a group like yours? The scariest place to be is in the same place we're in right now. Whether that's in a week from now, whether that's in a month from now, six months from now, or a year from now. That's the cost of not networking. That's the cost of not being active on social media. That's the cost of... Jumping into a Zoom, I'm not picking on anybody here, but just something to think about moving forward. That's the cost of jumping into a Zoom and not being active in the comments or jumping into a Zoom and having your your camera off. I mean, so much of like, it's those little things that make the biggest difference. So, so much of our our, our nonverbal or our communication is nonverbal. What is that? Like 80% of our communication or something is like non nonverbal. So what's the cost of all those little things when you look at where you are in your life right now? The car, the money, the you know whatever, the lifestyle, the friends, the relationships, the quality of all that kind of stuff is a direct reflection on the choices that you've made in your life up to this point. And they're an average of the ways that you think, the things that you hold yourself accountable and the way the the things that you tolerate. And until those things change, things for you aren't going to change. And the only way that those things are going to change again is by having new information. We get new information from the people that we are building relationships from. So that's the cost of not being in there and not, not, uh, you know, being active on social media. That's so huge. Um, I cannot thank you enough for, for being here today. I, I just wanted to throw out a couple, since we're, we're talking about some of this stuff, I've wanted to throw out a couple of the little sayings that I have. Just maybe it applies, maybe it doesn't, but I'm usually telling people, don't chase the deal, 
chase the relationship. You know, um, networking, you, you know, you don't market your business, you market yourself. You need to be out there. Um, what am I, if you're not memorable, you're forgettable. So people need to know who you are. You know, of course, your network is your net worth is one of the old ones uh, from the beginning of time. Um, one of my favorites, we mentioned this word earlier, is to network with intention. You know, if you're going to a meetup, you know, work the room. Don't spend more than a few minutes talking to any one person because you need as many people as possible to see which one of those people is going to be that gold nugget that you're going to walk away from from that event. And um, again, you know, networking leads to visibility and visibility to your opportunity. So get out there and network. Um, Jesse, thank you again. Your oh, video should you. be out within the week on the YouTube channel. Again, if you guys want to connect with Jesse, it's through his Instagram, Facebook. He's got the YouTube, social media. Um, true, true rock star. I cannot thank you enough for being with us today. Um, if you guys want to connect with me, my website's jjazizian.com. Go to my website. There's a little register now button. Please click that button, register for the group. You'll be sent information about all my upcoming guest speakers and, and Zoom calls. And um, Jesse, I guess... Uh, with you and I being out on social media, they're going to see you. They're going to see me. We'll, we'll see everybody in the future, right? Thank you for joining us today. Please look for more videos coming up from Flood Up with JJ. And look for Jesse Stanton all over the place. Over now, guys. Thank you for joining us.